Yes, you read that title correctly. Ellen Ripley comes face to face with the aliens, Predator, and the Terminator. And this should be the next movie in these three franchises because it's awesome. What's up everyone, James here, and we are covering Aliens vs. the Predator vs. the Terminator series. Make sure you hit that like button. So as I was covering Marvel's Predator series a while back, which I'll have a link to at the end of this video if you haven't seen it, while researching I came across this series and was shocked to discover this existed. This series came out in 2001 and was written by Mark Schultz, who wrote in both the Aliens and Predator comic series, an Alien vs Predator series, and Superman and Batman vs the Aliens and Predator series. So this guy is well versed in these amazing sci-fi creatures and pitting different properties against each other. And how he does it in this series is so much fun. Let's get into it. So this story begins on Earth in this low-end community called The Pits, where my favorite female sci-fi character of all time resides, Ellen Ripley. She's hiding away from people, and we'll find out soon why that's the case. This group is down here searching for her. When they approach her, Ripley immediately goes on the attack. She takes out one of these guys with ease. She warns the rest to back off and leave her be. The big guy of the group, whose name is Vorman, goes on the attack. And in just two moves, Ripley avoids his attack and lifts this guy over her head like nothing. Just when she's about to pull a bane and break this guy's back, at least that's what I was hoping she was going to do because it would be badass, she stops when this woman in the group tells her they're not her enemies and reveals herself to be Anna Lee Call. Now if you're asking yourself how Ripley got so strong and wondering who Anna Lee Call is, I will explain that right now. Be warned this will contain spoilers for Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection. If you don't care to hear any of this, just use the timestamps below to skip this part of the video. So in the film Alien Resurrection, on the United Systems military research vessel Auriga, military scientists created a clone of Ellen Ripley using DNA from blood samples that was obtained before she died in Alien 3. They cloned her because they wanted to use her as a host for the Xenomorph Queen, since Ripley was a host for one in Alien 3 which is why she sacrificed herself at the film's end. The military wanted to repeat that, and it's because of that and the imperfect cloning process that this Ripley clone, the eighth iteration of the Ripley clones the military had created, was accidentally given enhanced strength and reflexes, acidic blood, inherited memories from the prime Ellen Ripley's past, and an empathic link with the xenomorphs. She's basically an alien and human hybrid. When it comes to Annalie Call, in Alien Resurrection, she's one of the members of the mercenary crew that resided on the ship The Betty. She eventually is revealed to be an Auton, basically a robot. At some point in her past, she had hacked the United Systems military mainframe and found out every dirty little secret and operation they had. When she learned about the project with Ripley and the Xenomorphs, she joined the Betty Merc crew because they were working with the military at the time providing live human subjects to be hosts for the Xenomorphs. She pretended to be a lowly engineer. Her initial goal was to kill the Ripley clone before the Xenomorph Queen was born. However, she found out she was too late once she got there. The Queen had already been born, and the military had a host of Xenomorphs. Long story short, the Xenomorphs escaped imprisonment and chaos ensued. Ripley, Call, and a couple of other characters were the only survivors of the whole ordeal. Alien Resurrection ended with them arriving on Earth. Now returning to the story, sometime later at Call's base of operations, she and Ripley recall what happened after they arrived on Earth. Through their conversation, we learn Call was disappointed that at some point Ripley just up and left when they initially agreed on sticking together. Ripley responds to this saying, well, you didn't need me. You seem to be doing well for yourself, you've organized a crew here, you're selling on the black market and have connections. Call asks her how she's been surviving on Earth. Ripley answers that she isn't surviving, she's thriving in the pits because a monster clone freak has advantages. She's being sarcastic of course, this isn't the life she wanted. Call picks up on this and mentions that it is wrong that a woman of her experience and abilities is living like this when she should be in space navigating the stars. Ripley points out though that she can't because the military would love nothing more than to find her, cut her, and prod her until they find out what exactly she is. Because as I said earlier, she's an accidental super soldier. You know, the Steve Rogers the military didn't mean to create. Ripley says, get to the point, why are you here? This is where we learn the military is still continuing with their experiments with the Xenomorphs. 
which is no surprise at all because they never learn. Call explains that her moles uncovered a military bioengineering project at a science station called Typhoon. This project is led by a Dr. Trollenberg, who is focused on creating some hybrid super soldier involving xenomorph DNA. Okay, before we go any further, those of you who've never heard or read this story, so honor system here, I want you to comment right now on what you think Trollenberg is creating. We're going to find out soon, it's awesome. For a moment, we go to Dr. Trollenberg, who receives the finishing product for his super soldier, which is a xenomorph chest burster. He is told that General Helm, the commander of the science station, and the man behind this project has arrived. General Helm is pissed with Trollenberg because he's received reports of Trollenberg ordering cybernetic components from unauthorized sources. He demands to know what cybernetics has to do with alien genetic research that he's supposed to be working on. Trollenberg doesn't answer the question, he just tells him his work is important. Helm gets enraged and says that he is shutting down the project. At that moment, in the blink of an eye, Trollenberg shoots Helm's men right on the spot. General Helm shoots Trollenberg in the head, but the bullets just bounce off. Trollenberg is revealed to be a Terminator. He grabs General Helm and throws him and his men into a vat of the Xenomorph's acid blood. And this is not even the craziest revelation. And he is not the Terminator everyone is going to have to worry about. What's on the table is much, much worse. Returning to Ripley and Call, Call tells Ripley that her team has gained the schematics of the Typhoon science station and how she plans on infiltrating it, posing as a food catering service. But they need her since it involves Xenomorph DNA because she has a connection with them and she knows better than anyone else what will happen if the Xenomorphs are unleashed on the human race. Ripley initially refuses and doesn't care if the Xenomorphs run rampant again. She mentions that she no longer has nightmares about them, that she realized they are just creatures who do what they were born to do. And in her eyes, at this point, she believes maybe the Xenomorphs were meant to end the human race. Another reason why she refuses is that she doesn't want to risk being caught by the military and becoming a science project again. Call ends up giving her no choice she responds saying, I was programmed to care and protect. I've got no choice but to try and save humanity from itself, and I need your help. I'm sorry. If you don't agree to help, I'll send your location to the military intelligence. Ripley replies, I could learn to hate you. Now this is where the predator comes in. Now we can safely assume this is a blooded predator, because one of the trophies we see on his ship is the skull of a xenomorph. So for those of you who don't know this, in most Predator clans, this rank is earned by hunting and slaying a Xenomorph. An example of this is if you've seen Alien vs Predator, the Predators in that film were Youngbloods, Predators seeking to achieve blooded status. So he is not here for the achievement of a new status or the achievement of gaining another trophy. We will find out why the Predators are involved by the end of this series. The Predator simultaneously arrives at the science station as Call Ripley and company. Now Call lays out the plan for them, which is to strike fast once they enter the facility, and when they reach the labs, Ripley will deal with the unknown factor. Call's team we see here is pretty efficient. This isn't like some ragtag group. They operate like a highly trained unit. They reach Trollenberg's lab and take out the guards. They blow open the lab and find Terminator Trollenberg. He doesn't hesitate, not one iota. He immediately opens fire on them and kills multiple members of Call's team. They respond with firepower of their own, but it isn't doing anything to Trollenberg. However, they are destroying his living tissue, revealing his hyperalloy endoskeleton. That's when Ripley is the only one who realizes he isn't human. She tells the team he's an android. She eventually gets up close to bash him in the head, but to no surprise, it does nothing. Trollenberg grips her by the throat and has her dead to rights, but before he ends Ripley, he picks up on the Predator's signature. This shows us that even though the Predator is in its adaptive camouflage, the Terminator can still pick it up on its scanners. Trollenberg ends up releasing Ripley and goes to attack the Predator, but it's too late. The Predator throws his smart disc, taking Trollenberg's head clean off, and the Predator makes sure he permanently goes down when he fires his plasma caster going straight through Trollenberg's body. This is honestly a perfect depiction of how a fight between a T-800 and a Predator would go down. 
Granted, the Predator going up against any of the future iterations of the Terminator would definitely be different stories. The Predator moves further into the lab, and Ripley and company have no idea what happened. Once Ripley looks around the lab, she notices a tank holding this creature. And that is when she realizes Trollenberg wasn't working strictly on Xenomorphs, because that's something she would have picked up on because of her empathic link. Suddenly, the Predator gets thrown past her and the team. Now you may be asking, what could ragdoll a Predator like that? Well, something we've never seen before. A Terminator combined with the DNA of the Xenomorph, an alien android hybrid built like a brick house. This hybrid treats the Predator like a child. It grabs the Predator and starts choking the life out of him. Even when the Predator slices through this Terminator with his wrist blades, it doesn't even phase him. At that moment, Ripley and Call discern that this is the super soldier Trollenberg was working on. The Predator blasts the alien Terminator with its plasma caster, or maybe I should call it the Super Terminator, I'm not sure. I'm going to go back and forth in this video, but comment below which name you guys like more. Anyways, this does affect the Terminator, and it blasts him back. However, this is where it gets nuts. This alien Terminator has a crazy ability. It absorbs the elements of a nearby apparatus, beefing itself up. It is like Absorbing Man in Marvel Comics, except it doesn't coat itself with the element it absorbs like him. Ripley and Call pick up on this, and also pick up on the fact that this Super Terminator is adapting to the Predator's fighting style. It fully adapts and then goes to work on the Predator, smashing his helmet off, lifting him, and then ripping his arm clean off. Like damn son. The Super Terminator then walks up to the exterior bulkhead, absorbs it, and then blows a hole in the ship. Ripley and Call and her team make a run for their freaking lives. Though the Predator is tenacious, it does its best to hang on to the ship, it's no good. He gets sucked into space, and that's the end of him. All this shows us as the readers how dominant this new Terminator is. If you're thinking that's the last we'll see of a Predator in the story, don't worry, we have a whole lot more coming, and it's nuts. As Ripley, Call, and the team escape to their ship, Call grabs Trollenberg's head on their way out. The alien Terminator also escapes but not before heading into this lab on the station, where they keep face huggers and chest bursters. It takes a few chest bursters, and we'll see why soon. Call Ripley and the team make it out of the station successfully. At that moment though, the station explodes. They realize they were way over their heads and it cost them. Ripley points out that the hybrid definitely didn't die in that explosion. In order for them to get answers, Call attempts to patch a link with Trollenberg's memory cache in his skull. This is where we learn the history of this universe, and it's awesome because Mark Schultz makes sense of how these franchises would exist in the same universe. Call successfully patches in, but before she can attempt to bypass Trollenberg's locks, something opens up to her. A sleeper virus confronts Call in her attempt to access Skynet's Terminator intelligence. This virus approaches her in the form of John Connor. He says the purpose of this virus was to warn you of the evil with which you are now in contact with. My name is John Connor. This warning was recorded and implanted in the 35th year of the 21st century. If Skynet has survived in your time and my future, then terrible danger awaits you. First, you must know what Skynet represents. He goes on to explain the war with Skynet that began in the year 2032. In the Terminator films, we see this war as a possible terrible future if the Skynet program were to ever come online and become self-aware. But this series places it as a horrific past. Now why no one remembers this is because the military covered it up. It doesn't get explained as to why they did that, but I can only guess they did this because they didn't want anyone to get the idea of creating another Skynet or resurrecting it. Now John says to Call that Skynet's goal was to exterminate humanity, because it saw that as the guarantee of lasting world peace and the beginning of the perfect machine world order. That for years, humanity was on the brink of extinction. Now just like in Terminator Judgment Day, when the Resistance had revamped AT-800 and sent it into the past to protect John, the Resistance did the same here, except they didn't capture one and sent it into the past to prevent the war from happening. They had captured and revamped multiple Terminators, and programmed them with effective counter-Terminator techniques they developed. 
This turned the tide of the war. Skynet had underestimated humanity's ingenuity, creativity, and never give up attitude. This is where it gets even more interesting and pretty awesome because we see the resistance fighting side by side with Terminators. John goes on to explain that it wasn't until the eve of the final battle, the resistance's last great assault on Skynet's operations bunker, that they learned just how elaborate Skynet's machinations were. They learned that Skynet, realizing its defeat was imminent, took precautionary measures and created a program called the Skynet Resurrection Program, where it designed what they call a Crypto Terminator, a Terminator extremely carefully designed to pass as a human and last the centuries. By the time the Resistance reached far into Skynet's operations bunker, they realized they were too late. Skynet had successfully deployed its Crypto Terminator. The only thing they thought to do was to infect Skynet's operating system with their sleeper virus as a warning to anyone with Skynet's technology in the future. This is where it transitions to the Crypto Terminator, Dr. Trollenberg. We learned he was designed not only to last the centuries, but to mimic human habits and thought patterns, to completely disappear into the human race and wait it out until he found himself in a scientific research position. From there, he was to watch for new technological developments that would create a new generation of even deadlier Terminators. Eventually, being in a military scientific position, he learned about and encountered the Xenomorphs. At the end of the recording, John says to Call that if the Terminators are allowed to raise an army of new Terminators, they will have the power to resurrect their master, Skynet, and your world is doomed. For the sake of the human race, for the sake of all life, terminate Skynet. The victorious forces of the 21st century salute you and wish you luck. At the very moment when Call comes out of her link with Trollenberg's memory cache, she, Ripley, and the crew are ambushed by multiple Predator ships. The Predators teleport in their ship, and the big guy of Call's crew, Vorman, tries to fight them, but he literally gets taken down in one hit. Now they didn't come to fight, they came for Ripley. One of them grabs her and cuts her, and they see she has acid blood, confirming for them that she is part Xenomorph. Now how they know she was, we don't know, I just chalk it up to their tech or Yautua senses. They capture her and take her away. From here we go to the alien Terminator and his escape pod. He is cutting open one of the chest bursters, and we see that he is working on another alien Terminator. Once he reaches this military station, the station's lieutenant treats him as a survivor of what's being called the Typhoon Disaster, calling in the station's medtechs. The alien Terminator says to him, thank you lieutenant, but medical assistance will not be necessary. We have survived in excellent condition. Now please take us to this vessel's commanding officer. Call and Ripley now have two alien Terminators to deal with. That's the end of the video, I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure you comment below if you want the end of this series. Subscribe to the channel, help me reach 50,000 subscribers. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify, hit that follow button. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Other than that, have an awesome day. And always remember, every day, to go beyond.